On this week's weekly video, fishing forecast have fanned, stopped blowing, and we have the reports to prove it. The fishermen did a little more bass research last week, and I have some of the details, and our correspondents check in from around the island. Stay tuned, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, May 19th, and I'm stepping in for Matt today, and we have lots of reports from around the island. First, I want to remind you that the digital edition is out now, and it's one of the great benefits of being a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine. Of course, being a subscriber, you can be part of the Coastal Kayak Clash and Dreamboat Contest. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Last week, Matt had the chance to join the team with Gray Fish Tag Research and tag a bunch of bass. They ended up tagging several fish with green streamer tags, but unfortunately, their boat didn't find a proper tagging candidate for a satellite tag. Chuck Manning's boat did, however. They tagged the right-sized fish with a satellite tag for us to track its migration and learn more about these striped bass in the future. More details to come in the July issue of The Fisherman Magazine. All right, now let's go around the map and let me tell you what I'm hearing. The bluefish bite continues along the south shore of the island from the city all the way to Montauk and inside Peconic Bay. For boat and surf anglers, Matt was able to get in on the action inside the bay from both the boat and the surf using topwater plugs. One that seemed to do well for him until the bluefish stole it was a savage panic pencil popper. Porgies are being caught throughout the Peconic Bay and have spread throughout the North Shore and the island also. We haven't got many reports of jumbos, but we are hearing good numbers of medium-sized fish. Take a look at the Shinnecock Star and the Fin Chaser if you're looking to fish for those Peconic Porgies. The weak fish bite is holding steady inside the Peconics and Great South Bay too. Matt had a decent outing with them with fish up to about 3 pounds. For Fluke, I know all the South Shore Bays have been producing fish, but the key is to find that warmer water where the Fluke are more active. Montauk is still a little bit colder, but some Fluke have been caught out that way too. Squid and spearing combos along with gulp and fish bites have been working great. News 12 meteorologist Rich Von Olin has the outlook for the weekend. Rich? Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast, see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, websites, and weather tools, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview for the island this weekend. Uh, water temps uh, came up a little bit. We had some warmer weather during the week, 50s now, most spots, starting to see some uh, warmer temps in the western Sam. Overall, the wave heights look decent again in the ocean for Saturday. I think a general two to four foot roll, you know, one or two in the Sam, looking pretty good, just west to east, all across the island from you know, from East Rockaway out to Montauk Point. Uh, the problem this weekend in the ocean is going to be Sunday afternoon after about 2, 3, 4 p.m. Start to get a big southwest breeze ahead of a front, and that could uh, also have some thunderstorm showers with it towards the evening. But general light south, southwesterly on Saturday looks, you know, fishable, pretty doable in the ocean, pretty quiet weather. And then we start to get those southwesterlies that start to crank a little bit Sunday afternoon. We start to go 10, 15, 20. You want to be aware of that uh, late in the day Sunday. High tide Saturday, north shore for the, uh, the mid-afternoon, south shore about midday. It's going to be hot to the west towards the city, Jersey Shore, western side in the 80s to near 90, cooler on the east end, Montauk some 60s. So pretty good weekend overall. I think we'll be okay. Again, most of Saturday's terrific on the Guru here. Kind of see what we got going on. Um, you know, light breeze most of the day, west-southwest. You know, wave height's pretty good, and there's Sunday. You know, we start to get a little more of a hard southwest after about noontime. I think the morning on Sunday, if you're going to do anything, will be the best time of the day. So overall, another good-looking weekend. Be safe as always. Enjoy. Catch them up. Matt, back to you. It's time for our correspondents to check in with Matt. Let's start off with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim? Well, greetings, everybody, from Montauk. Uh, nice, quick, uh, short report this week, but that doesn't mean there's not a lot going on. Um, on the bass and bluefish front, there's plenty of striped bass and bluefish um, showing up around Montauk. Um, catching some on diamond jigs. A couple of the guys chartering, been doing pretty good on the diamond jigs. Um, there's definitely some bass in the shallow water up in the bay, and there's a lot of uh, larger size bluefish around. Um, a lot of you can see them on the right day tailing on the surface. Um, fluke fishing's kind of hit or miss. It's starting to pick up. Um, 
weather, when it's good, uh, people are picking away and catching some fluke. Definitely not gangbusters yet because the water temperature is still coming up. Um, offshore report, um, the Vikings been doing some mixed tile and cod fishing trips. They've been doing pretty good uh, south of Nantucket. Uh, those are reservation-only trips, and you can go on their website and check their calendar. Speaking of the Viking, they just announced their um, uh, striped bass jigging and full moon bass trips. So if you're interested in doing something like that, you can get on their website and check that out. The Vikings also currently porgy fishing up in the bay and doing really good. Uh, a lot of nice big porgies up in there. So uh, that's pretty much the report this week. Next week I'll be fishing the Manhattan Cup. I'm looking forward to that. That's always a great event. Um, and I will talk to you next week. From Sag Harbor, we have Andy and Will. Report this week out of Sag Harbor. Bottom fishing is still going pretty strong. We have porgies and weak fish in the bay, which is great. Uh, Fluking's definitely been a little bit slower. A lot of pick to see robins, but people are still at it. So hopefully that's gonna improve soon. Uh, and obviously the weather's been kind of tough with the wind, but we're gonna get some better days and it's only getting better from here, guys. So as Will said, the weak fish and the porgies really picked up a lot in the Peconic as the water's gotten warmer near Sag Harbor. We also have a lot of schoolies coming in luckily and some bluefish too, especially on the top water, hit them with those plugs, it's really awesome. So, you know, the striped bass kind of mainly schoolies ranging from 10 inches to 25, almost keeper size. So keep those lines tight and we'll see you next week. Back to you, Matt. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. It is all about the big gator blues here uh, for the past week. Went out Friday, a little foggy, a little drizzly, and we're hoping to still get after some of those, you know, schoolie to just about slot size stripers, maybe some weak fish. Did not have any luck with those. Uh, last, and we figured, you know, maybe we'd run into some blues and all of a sudden uh, donated a couple of soft plastics to the blues, switched over the top water. It was phenomenal. A couple hours of fishing. Um, big one I got was 15 pounds. Went back out Sunday uh, with a buddy, same buddy, um, got generally the same area, bit east of Mariches and really got into them again. My son got a 14 and a half pounder. Um, from start to finish, which was a kind of a proud moment for me. I uh, did a great job fighting the fish, so uh, he, he's still pretty fired up about that. Was out this afternoon, a lot of west wind, very chocolatey kind of water, end of outgoing, got into them again, a little bit smaller, and there were a lot of them. I mean, you could see them finning, and not just the usual finning, it was almost like how you see Bunker in, uh, you know, the lapping waves uh, off the beach in the, in the fall. It was just crazy how many fish were, were around. So that was a lot of fun. Um, a couple of bass mixed in, haven't heard of much. A couple of, you know, surf casting at night, um, guys who are in the right spot. And, uh, you know, right after we had the full moon on Saturday, um, you know, had a couple of catches in Shinnecock Canal, still some weak fish, there's blues, bass, that porgy bite over Peconic still going pretty good and also some weak fish around. So there's plenty to, to chase after this weekend. I hope you get them. Uh, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, still use some boats for the Manhattan Cup. If you are able to do that and help us out by donating your time and boat for the day to take out teams of anglers, fishing bait, artificial. Uh, also really need some fly boats. If um, there's anyone available that can do that, reach out to me. Uh, it's Friday, June 3rd. We'd love to have you. It's an awesome day. Get a lot of veterans out. So win-win all around and a bunch of us from the fishermen will be there. So until next week, catch them up, have fun. Talk to you then. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. You know, what's so much fun about doing these reports is that uh, they follow in a series. This week's report, it's so incredible because we're going to talk about coming off of the supermoon. Last week's report, we spoke about the, the super moon that was coming up and what was going to happen with the temperature change with the wind shifting to the south and what happened out of control fishing and that super moon that goes back to previous reports that we did when we all spoke about um salooner theory so the the reports are very relevant and you can i really encourage you to go back to our youtube page and just follow them you'll get you i changed my hairstyle and some reports are better than others but you'll see a cycle of <clears throat> what happens within a particular month of the season. And it's really fun to watch. And it's like a digital logbook. So what happened is what's going on right now. 
The weak fish is, is amazing. The fluking, the porgies have moved into the beach. We have a lot of striped bass. A large biomass has come down from the Hudson River and they're setting up in the deeper areas. Um, unbelievable to see them stacked up, you know. The gas, the gas price is really rough on everybody. It went up again. So the surf casting guys, the boat people, particularly the for hire fleet, everybody's getting really hammered. So it's important to follow reports to keep your idea from running all over the place, wasting gas and wasting your precious resources, you know, because it's it's really important to stay accurate. And what happens is as we learn, we have to really apply something that's very, very important. The whole conservation aspect of fishing. You know, Sunken Meadow went down there on Monday, Tuesday. The, the beach was literally, and summer water, littered with dead sea robins. Now, that wasn't somebody doing drag netting or anything. That's people fishing and leaving them all to die on the beach. We really should understand that each sea creature has a purpose that maybe we don't understand. Now, this week coming up, as the moon comes off the super moon, we've got a lot of different weather conditions happening. We're gonna see wind shifts in different directions, east, north, south, west. The temperature is rising up into the higher 80s. And what that means is that the barometric pressures are gonna be changing quite a bit. I think it's gonna throw off the fishing. So if you can find an area where there's bait, there's a tremendous amount of bait that we see now. Um, coming off the moon, you've got cinder worm hatch, tremendous amount of uh, grass shrimp spearing everywhere. They've got uh, uh, the, the little chubs that we call them killies. So there's a lot of different size bait. Adult bunker moved into the bay as well. And if you look around, you'll see scattered schools of very small peanut bunker. So there's a lot to eat out there. Look for the shift of these uh, smaller fish moving into the bays with the larger fish moving from the Hudson into our triangle areas. You're gonna see Crane's neck light on fire. I bet your Cold Spring Harbor is doing really well too. So there's a lot to see and I hope that I get a chance for you to come down to the shop, meeting a lot of people and the feedback about the reports. It's just so awesome. But remember, I couldn't do it without as much feedback that I get from customers. It's about sharing knowledge and uh, never spot burning. But the, but the sharing of the knowledge really helps our learning curve. And uh, it's great to see people getting their fish, treating them well, getting their catches that they keep, bleed them, put them on ice, make it healthy and enjoy that fish. Until next week, I bid you peace, tight lines. From the Fire Island area in the Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Uh, fishing's pretty good now, Fire Island. Uh, back Bay areas, a lot of weak fish, blue fish, some fluke and striped bass pretty much all over the place with keepers in between and I've heard news of some real nice striped bass 25 to 35 pounds as well and I think the lack of bunker out in the ocean uh, has a striped bass moving inshore through the inlets to try and find something something to eat so I think it's going to be a good inshore fishing time uh, as long as anyone can afford the gas prices. It's ridiculous what's going on. It's really mind-bending and it just, I have no words to describe it. How do you go fishing when you're paying six dollars a gallon for gas? So something's got to be done here. This has to be straightened out. But anyway, uh, Bergen Bay Docks Striped Bass Tournament, June 11th. Be there. Now let's check in with KJ Kennedy, also from the Great South Bay. The water temperature in the back bays right now is 52 to 53 degrees. And by the end of the weekend, we're gonna be in the upper 50s, maybe even low 60s, depending on how the weather plays out. It looks like Friday morning and Saturday morning are really good windows to get out there. So I would make some plans to go fishing this weekend. Pretty much take your pick in the back bays. We have fluke now biting. Blue fish have moved in. There's still a good run of weak fish, and we know that the stripers are here. With the water temperature rising, now it's time to get out into the ocean, start looking for life, seeing if those bunker may be moved out. That dent, those dense bunker pods that were moving through the Great South Bay in my area on the South Shore, I can't seem to find them. So I'm hoping that they're gonna resurface maybe somewhere out in the ocean. We'll get on some nice blitzes out there. And with this past full moon that just, that just happened a couple days ago, from this time well into June, we could start looking for tuna runs. So that's really exciting. So tight lines and have fun this weekend.
with our fly and freshwater report. We have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Well, this week has been really good as far as the fishing goes. I have, was fortunate enough, I took a young couple out of the city, I guided them out of the connect quad. They never even touched the fly rod. And we were able to get a couple fish into the net. And uh, Frances and her boyfriend, uh, Jason, they had a great time. They all had, they went home with fish. It was terrific. The smiles. That's what I like when I guide. I like to see a lot of smiles. Now, as far as uh, the saltwater scene goes, well, we uh, Doc Dennis is going out and fishing out of his duck boat, and uh, it's been bluefish. Uh, in fact, the last time he was in, he said there were so many bluefish that uh, he had to leave. He was too exhausted to catch them. So there are a lot of fish out here. Uh, I did run a shop trip this past Monday to he uh, Hempstead Lake. Windy, it's very tough in the canoes and kayaks, but it's interesting. We didn't have much success, only one person hooked up, and I'm trying to figure out, I gotta find more information about it because it's so close to my house. This Saturday, Mark Sadati, one of the world class fly casters, is doing a, a, a you know, he's doing a, a seminar at uh, one of the parks. Go to my website, River Bay Outfitters, for more information. Uh, he, there is still room. You will let, add 20 feet to your cast. There's a, no doubt in my mind. He's an incredible caster. So if you like to, it's going to be this Saturday at 9 o'clock. But you do have to sign up, and there is a fee. So please give me a call if you want, 516-415-7748, if you're interested. To next week, tie lines, everybody. Andre Montgomery has a report from the City Island area. Thank you, Matt. This is Captain Danny from the Island Current. He ran the Island Current today. I'm going to tell you what he did today. How you doing, guys? Captain Dan from the Island Current, like Dre said. Fishing for real, baby. Uh, we had uh, pretty much drop and stick fishing today. Every full boat limit, everybody had fun, kids, ladies. It was really great fishing today. You yep. Exotic species come up today? Uh, we had a few sea bass that we threw back, a couple of blackfish we threw back, a couple of short fluke that went back, of course. Uh, the fluke are making their run and making the show. Yeah, definitely, definitely getting some fluke mixed in. It's nice to see a little uh, variety of fish coming out. You know, as the water gets warmer, you're going to start seeing that, for sure. From Jamaica Bay, let's check in with Chris Landry. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it was extremely foggy, dangerous conditions, limited visibility, but that didn't keep the boats away. Man, as you can see, there were tons of boats out. The word is out, the bite is hot. But you can find your own bunker schools away from the crowd. That's what we did and got on a hot bass bite. Also on Thursday uh, with Bass Appeal, we caught another tag bass. I called it in, they're sending us a, a hat and a report on the fish that was caught. So hopefully, I'll have that in the next couple weeks. Also, uh, many reports of uh, gator bluefish in now. Bay Original caught these bluefish and other reports as well, so that's exciting. I still have to catch my first one. Um, I did catch this uh, striped bass with a big wound in its back, and I'm wondering what do you think caused it? Is this from a propeller? Is it from an infection? Sometimes the nets uh, get the slime off the, the fish, the protective slime. Do you think it was a, a bluefish, a shark, disease? Uh, they're called rockfish for a reason. Is it banging up against these rocks? Uh, what do you think caused this damage to this fish? Uh, so let's, let's treat these fish with care. I practice catch and release. Uh, please consider catch and release. And uh, be safe out there in the fog and these uh, crowded conditions while the bite is hot. Thank you, uh, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. Hi guys, Raul Ortiz here, the Urban Angler, with my report for the week. Fishing continues to be good here around the city, uh, in the Long Island Sound, South Shore beaches of Long Island, Hudson River, pretty much there's fish all around. A lot of fish in the 10 to 20 pound range, a lot of slot fish being caught. Um, I did have a night or two where it was pretty tough on catching fish and maybe a night or two without catching anything. Um, but it was nice to see that there's a lot of bait around in the waters in certain locations. Um, no fish on them, but uh, any day now in those areas, um, there's going to be some fish just devouring the bait. 
Um, fish should be flushing out of the Hudson any day now. Um, I'm not sure, but I think the spawning might be almost done or done. And uh, we should see some bigger fish rolling through. And lastly, let's go back down to Costa Rica and check in with Ben Gilmore. Hey guys, checking in from Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. If you guys have not heard about our marlin, fad, and seamount fishery, you got to look into that a little bit more. May through November is the best time of year to go fish our marlin fads. These trips take place on large sport fishers, of which we have plenty here at Marina Pez Vela, 60 to 120 miles offshore. The trips are two to four nights and will put you on the best blue marlin fishing in the planet. Right now is the best time of year to go fish for them. And you can expect when the bite is on upwards of 10 blue marlin shots per day. Right now is the best time of year to go guys. Check us out, Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. Hope to see you down here soon. Remember, like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description for all the links and more information, and of course, follow our correspondents. Check out their YouTube pages, check out their social media pages, and we'll see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.